Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setra. I hope you are doing well. So today I am doing the third series of my educational program on reasons why an individual can be removed or struck off the NMC register. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a UK registered nurse who was removed from the NMC register for incorrect or fraudulent revalidation entry. So if you would like to know more about this case, why not watch the video to the end. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setcher. I hope you're doing well. So if this is the first time you've come across my video, please remember to like, subscribe and share. So I'm a registered nurse in the UK and I normally do videos giving tips and advice to overseas nurses who are planning to relocate to UK to work or those who are already here and I give tips as to how to look after yourself, how to navigate the system and how to look after your NMC registration because as we all know it is difficult to get the registration and PIN and if you get it you have to be able to try as much as possible to look after it. I have been fine for all the time I've been here so I know you'll be okay but I feel it's important for you to know what happens in the system and this is purely educational to help to guide you um, so you know some of the things that can unfortunately lead to you being removed from the registrar or struck for off. So today as I said in the introduction we're going to be talking about a UK registered nurse who was removed from the register for fraudulent or incorrect revalidation entry. So as you may be aware any nurse every UK registered nurse has to revalidate their registration or do revalidation every three yearly and um, the requirement for revalidation include making sure you have practiced 450 hours if you are a full-time job or whether you're in full-time job or not you have to make sure that you have practiced as a nurse for 450 hours if you're dual registered you should prove that you have done 900 uh, practice hours Secondly, you have to prove that you have done 35 hours of continuing professional development CPD hours, including 20 hours of participatory learning. You need to have five pieces of uh, reflective or practice related feedback. You also have to have five written reflective accounts. You need to have a reflective discussion with another registrant. So all the reflections that you have done, you need to discuss them with another registrant which is called the reflective discussion you need to also show health and character declaration you have to do that on a form as part of the process you need to make sure you have a professional indemnity arrangement in place and you do have to have a confirmation uh, done by another NMC registrant and that registrant would have to sign and also put their NMC registration in there to say they have done all these things or they have confirmed. It could be your manager, it could be your supervisor, it could be your mentor so far as their registrant anyway. So the aim of their validation process is for you know practitioners or nurses to reflect on the NMC code in your daily practice and the course includes prioritize people, practice effectively, preserve safety, promote professionalism and trust. So the case I'm going to talk about involves a registered adult registered nurse who had two charges brought against him. The first one is the fact that on his application for revalidation the registrant stated that they received confirmation from a colleague when actually, unfortunately, that did not happen. The second charge was that on his revalidation application, the registrant stated that they had a reflective discussion with a particular um, colleague when such a discussion, um, unfortunately, did not take place. This means that the registrant's entry on the sub part of the NMC register was incorrectly 
made. There wasn't any issue with his practice or his professional behavior. The only thing he did wrong was, unfortunately, fraudulently or incorrectly, putting someone's details that they have done discussions and the person has confirmed their revalidation. Now, let's continue. So the registrant was referred to the NMC by another nurse who was actually known to him and he actually made contact with this person regarding his NMC registration. So the NMC, the, the registrant submitted his online revalidation submission and named a colleague as his confirmer and reflective discussion partner. The colleague was contacted by the NMC and the colleague stated that although so the colleague stated that although she was happy to act in this capacity, she did not have a reflective discussion with or provide confirmation to the registrant. So on this first charge, it was proved and this was based on the fact that the colleague's witness statement and the revalidation summary of the registrant himself, he ticked yes to say that he has received confirmation from an appropriate confirmer. In the witness statement, the colleague stated that um, she did not sign the revalidation forms, although she saw the completed revalidation uh, template. She did not sign them and did not ask and was not asked by the registrant to sign them. So actually the registrant did send his completed template and forms to this person, but unfortunately he did not ask them to sign it. So that went against him. The colleague also noted that in her statement that the only requirement that she realized were left on his were his reflective discussion and confirmation, both of which she did not provide and did not give consent to the registrant to use her details for the revalidation form. She also stated that she was happy to do that uh, once she was satisfied with the evidence, but they never got to the stage where she would have said, okay, I've looked at your forms and I was satisfied and we are doing the discussion and I'm confirming, so they didn't get to that stage. In the revalidation summary as well, the registrant entered the date of reflection discussion or reflective discussion and named a colleague to have done the discussion with. Um, and in the colleague statement as well, they reported that the registrant has sent them copies of his reflective piece and they also recalled that they, they told him they had no concerns. Um, they have a little recollection about the conversation, but thought they may have expressed to the registrant that the reflective piece was satisfactory. Therefore, he, the registrant, may have misunderstood this to be a reflective discussion. And apparently this discussion was very brief. So there was some sort of brief discussion between the registrant and this colleague, but I think things just went wrong because they did not finalize or they didn't agree that, oh, okay, this is my confirmation or this is my discussion with you. They reported that um, they did not give consent to the registrant to use their names and details on the revalidation form. And before you put somebody's details on your revalidation form, you should have their consent or they should actually be giving you the NMC registration and by and all that. So I don't know how they got there. I know you can get it anyway. The panel were actually satisfied that having found all the facts proved and that the decision to admit the registrant on the register was based on wrong or inaccurate information. The registrant, in the registrant statement, he stated that he had put his trust in his colleagues to help with his uh, revalidation and that honesty was very important to him. And this was, as, uh, it was accepted by them. However, the incorrect information were particularly or possibly a mistake on the part of the registrant which appeared mainly to be due to his lack of understanding of English. So it seems like he got the thing all mixed up or 
or did not understand the situation instead of asking because yes he has sent his revalidation forms to a colleague thinking that by sending it to them they instead of doing the revalidation or the reflective discussion he thought by sending it to them to read and them getting back to say it was satisfactory meant that they've had a discussion that is my thinking i don't know what he was thinking and also the fact that they got back to him or he's made contact meant that they are confirming but it doesn't work like that you have to have a face-to-face -face, or even if you can't have a face-to-face -face conversation you can do things like zoom or you know teams and have this discussion because all the pieces of evidence or reflection you have done you should be able to um, have or discuss this with other people uh, before anything so based however that he was found it was found that it was his responsibility to make sure that the requirement for his revalidation were met so regardless of his lack of understanding or misunderstanding of what happened unfortunately he entered someone's details without their consent and he put a date that he's had a revalidation or reflective discussion which uh, apparently according to the other person did not happen therefore the information regarding the entry to the register was incorrectly or was deemed fraudulent uh, therefore the appropriate outcome was for him to be removed from the register the interim suspension order of 18 months was given to allow for him to possibly appeal and if no appeal is made, then the interim order will lapse in 28 days after the decision of the hearing was made. And um, unfortunately, as I said, there were no evidence of clinical concerns about this particular res uh, registrant. His clinical practice were okay. The only thing he did was that he thought he has had a discussion by sending details of his revalidation to a colleague and him putting a date that they've had a discussion when a discussion did not happen and also him putting a colleague's details as a confirmer when the colleagues have said they have not given consent for their details to be put in. So it's, it's just somehow, I would say, an unfortunate situation and that has led to this particular registrant losing their NMC registration. So please be careful. If you do to have your revalidation or if you arrived and you get your PIN, make sure you look at the NMC website, see what the requirements are, make sure you start gathering your evidence and when the time comes, NMC would contact you regarding when you should start your revalidation. Normally from six months they start giving you, you know, warning or just reminder and you can start working through that with your manager, your ward manager, your mentor, your supervisor and make sure you write all the pieces, make sure you meet all the requirements. If you're full time, definitely you get the 450 hours and um, any training you have done, make notes so that you need to use all those things. Any patient feedback, any colleague feedback, good or bad, write it down and reflect on it and use for your revalidation and I hope you'll be fine. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Take care of yourself, look after your pain and I will see you again or you hear from me again very soon. Take care and remember to like, subscribe and share. Take care, bye-bye.